Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's demo subject is alleyway. This is a very simple subject, but doesn't mean it is easier to paint. I already finished the contour drawings. Let's directly dive into the painting process. So the first thing I will do, I always wear the paper front and the back. So I start with the back side of the paper and then work my way into the front side. So I use my trusty Escoda mount brush completely wet the back and you can see the front side start to curl up. In order to make the painting completely flat, I have also wet the front. In that case, the paper can stay flat and stick to the board. It is easier to apply to the initial color version wash. Because if you look at the reference photo, the doorway is actually white. So as the telephone pose, so I have to use a synthetic brush to absorb the excessive water from the wetted paper. The reason doing this is when I apply the initial wash, the color, the pigmentation will not travel as easy as the rest of the paint. In another word, what I'm doing is isolate the two areas in order to maintain a relatively drier conditions so the painting won't necessarily expand it to the, those two areas. That's one technique I use uh, very often in my painting process. So here comes the initial wash. I, still very, I stayed very close to the reference photo this is a very classic uh, yellow ochre uh, type of uh, stucco walls. I go very carefully to cut off some of the doorways, but for the, for the rest of the areas, my purpose is to maintain a very fluid and a good wash. So I just write, paint right over to some of the utility box. So what I'm doing now is trying to splattering some of the coat colors on the warm color walls, try to represent some of the chips and cracks on the wall. My painting style is pretty much very representational, which means a very impressionistic, not a very realism. For the details like that, I will not uh, paint uh, all these pieces and pieces. In contrast, I'll use my own visual language to be representative to what the photo shows and uh, always indicate now state. So I began to transition from the vertical plane to the horizontal planes using a gray tone to show all the groundwork. The grounds. I try to make it a little bit darker as towards the bottom of the paper. Sometimes uh, because I rewrite the paper, the color version is easily washed away. So I have to apply the pigmentation sometimes on multiple times to make sure that can stay on the paper. So I tilt my paper to let the gravity do the work. So the pigmentation is traveling down to the bottom of the paper and have this wonderful feathered effects. A little bit darker on the bottom of the wall. After this initial wash, so this, by the way, this is almost like a pure elevation joints. In order to get a three-dimensionality, the only way you can do is through shadows. Right now, I begin to, using my synthetic brush, try to lift out some of the paintings. For all these utility boxes, or actually anything that is uh, extruding from the vertical wall. Some of the highlight of the wires. If you can do at the right stage, for example, a few minutes after the initial wash, using the synthetic 
brush is a really good way to lift off the highlights. If you wait a little bit longer, once the, the paint is dry and absorbed by the paper, you'll no longer be able to do that. So the timing here is really the essence. I also try to just doing a little bit of uh, work, a lift out of the paint to represent the cracks and the chips on the wall. If this show up in the final version, that's great. If not, I'm not going to worry too much about it. So after the initial wash is done, I began to look at the shadows. The first thing I will do, I will do the shadows on the doors. The shadow is not necessarily gray color or black color. If you look at carefully, always to animate your shadows, always using the neutral gray at the beginning. And then once the base color is done, always alternating your color temperature in order to make the painting more dynamic and interesting. I always start a neutral gray, and then I try to find a colder tones or warmer tones to compensate the initial shadow wash. So it's amazing once the shadow is done, you can instantly see the three-dimensionality the, the, the walls and the, the doorways being recessed on the back and put a little bit of colder color by the shadows. I began to work on my way on the, on the upper corner, upper right corner, and it follows this sort of a diagonal path, walk my way from the bottom, from, from the top right to the bottom left corner. I can always use my fingers to feel if the paper is uh, dry enough or is still too wet to do the shadow uh, wash. I can always use my tissue to touch it to almost uh, access, accelerate the drying process and then apply to the shadow. If the shadow is start to bleeding or expanding out a little bit, I'm not going to worry about it. In this case, I did use a higher blower, try to give a blast on the center of the painting because of this particular case. In the center, we want to do this major focal point, these shadows. As you can see now, I start to verify the verifying the color, the shadow temperature a little bit, meaning add a little bit colder color here and there to make shadow pops even more. Doing a little bit of shadowing on these wires. After using the higher dryer, you can see the line work I applied afterwards, it began to be, have this more solid and more defined edges. The reason I like this painting, this, this initial reference photo is because they also are, have something on the bottom left corner. From a composition standpoint, this is really good to balance elements of your painting. I 
I feel it is ready to do a big uh, shadow in the middle. The shadow I'm doing is uh, the major telephone post that is casting the shadows on the wall. First, I use a synthetic brush. I'm searching for a little bit of definite uh, shallow shadow patterning at the beginning. And then as you can see, I switch out to a Chinese brush to do a major shadow work. The reason I'm switching is because I am still searching for the variety of brush marks and the more important, the variety of edges from more defined hard edges to the last and the found edges to the soft edges towards the bottom of the shadow. You can also see I began to switch the color temperature of the shadow from the big uh, solid uh, wash, a more warmer tone to the individual wires and the telephone wires to more colder tones. So shadow, as you can see from this example, is not just a one a gray tone. It has a wonderful full range of values. Also as a different color temperature, that's where you can make your shadow become really dynamic and interesting. That's also the reasons I picked this subject. I want to show you how to make the shadows animated and start to instantly standing out in the painting. So once this uh, shadow on the wall is done, I instantly connect to the shadows on the little curve and then casting on the ground floor. You can begin to see I also change the color temperature to a colder one because indicating these shadows follows on the different planes, once on the vertical walls, once on the um, horizontal on the ground. Once this major shadow wash is done, I began to searching for a little bit of bits and pieces to connecting shape, also as well as to define the, the, all the utility box. This become a smaller shapes, all the bits and pieces. But also the main idea is connectivity is all about the connection. The shadows need to connect one another. The shadow also needs to make sure your major shapes helps your major shapes pops out. In this instance, you have three big uh, uh, boxes extruding from the wall and a little smaller ones on the bottom left corner. So I can also use my palette knives to cut off some of the highlights. I can also use the brush by the end, but I feel like using the knives or your fingernails to lift up, this looks more natural and fresh than the after sauce, the gouache. Just a little bit highlights and the shadows on the door knocks, that's it. Right now I will see this, the, the center of interest, the focal point of these paintings already done. That's a big casting, casting shadows. Right now I'm doing is uh, on the right side of the painting, there's a giant telephone post. Once this post is in there, you can see immediate, immediate connection between the main subject and the shadows. I started doing uh, using a white color to define the shape of the pose. And then because the light source from the right side cascading the shadows on the left, left side, so I began to do the, the darker portion of the telephone pose. And then you can see just one very confident brush strokes. That's it. 
That's how you maintain the freshness and spontaneity in the watercolor paintings. Also began to connect in the smaller shapes to the main telephone post. So always come from the big shape and then smaller shapes. Need be more details work on the on the top right uh, the utility box, but I got a little to be honest carried away. I try to make it more too much of details or start to begin to feel like a little bit of too much like illustration. So there's a there's a voice in my mind telling me to stop doing that. So that's why can see I use my tissues to lift out some of the too much detailed work. Still want to maintain this fairly abstract looking. So that's why there's a balance between too much illustration and uh, your impressionistic just get down to the basic. As I'm doing now is I try to add just a little bit of interest on the wall patterns, whether it's a cracks or indicate the extremely wider look of the walls, maybe the cracks and chips on the wall. But again, sometimes when you're doing some sort of this, sometimes you're doing a little bit too much. Almost right now, you can see all the patternings happen on the the background began to distract people from looking at the main subject which is a big shadow pattern on the wall so that's why I'm using the tissues to lift out some of the uh, patterns too much patterns after lift out a few of them I feel like right now I can achieve a balance there's something going on on the wall but it's not uh, obvious enough to distract people from looking at the center of interest. Right now the painting begin to assuming the final finished look, but uh, as I mentioned before, watercolor do dry lighter, so I feel like right now the foreground is a little bit glazed over in order to make sure everything above is anchored down on the bottom of the painting. In order to make it interesting, I began to sp sp splattering just a very simple uh, clean water droplet. So to make this very interesting textures in the foreground. At the final stage, I began to use gouache to add some of the highlights that's been missing during the painting process. But once again, the gouache needs to be applied in a limited area, just here and there. If it's too much, it began to look very creamy or lose the freshness of the watercolor. This painting is very small, it's about 8 by 12, but as you can see from my demonstration process, there are still some thoughts and the techniques behind these simple drawings. So in order to make a simple subject looks more dynamic and uh, interesting, there are certain techniques and the thoughts behind it. Here's the final finish the painting. I hope you enjoyed my painting process. Uh, if you like this video, please consider subscribe my channel. I will produce a full length of watercolor demonstration. 
hope to see you next time bye